Before the Lord of the Rings, Aragorn served in both Rohan and Gondor, under the name Thorongil, but soon after he travelled east and south, to regions full of his enemies, and this begs the question, why? Why did Aragorn travel to the east and south before the Lord of the Rings? Welcome back friends and foes of Middle-earth, today we celebrate Tolkien Reading Day, and this year's topic is travel and adventure. And this reminded me of my own theory I came up with last year, when someone asked me why Aragorn went east and south. So today on Council of the Rings, we'll dive into the lore and see if there's any hidden clues that can help us answer this question. But before we dive into that, I want to give a shout out to my fellow Tolkien channels participating in this year's Tolkien Reading Day. This year we are raising awareness for the victims of the recent earthquakes in Turkey. So many people have lost family members, friends and their homes. So please consider supporting them. There's a link in the pinned comment below. I've had the honor of hosting this year's playlist. So make sure to check it out and watch the videos from some of your favorite Tolkien content creators. There's a link at the end of the video and in the pinned comment below. And back to Aragorn. Aragorn grew up in Rivendell under Elrond's guidance and protection with the name Estel, meaning hope in Elvish. In 2952 of the Third Age, Elrond finally revealed Aragorn's true identity to him. Soon after he went into the wild and started to explore Middle-earth. Four years later, he would meet with Gandalf for the first time and a friendship between them would begin. From Gandalf he would learn about much of the evil that had started to stir in Middle-earth once again. The following year, he started his great journeys as Thorongil and entered the service of King Thengil of Rohan. Between 2957 to 2980, he would serve under Thengil in Rohan and Ecthelion II in Gondor. His last efforts in the service of Gondor was to attack the havens of Umbar. He gathered a small fleet and came to Umbar unlooked for by night, and there burned a great part of the ships of the Corsairs. He himself overthrew the captain of the haven in battle upon the quays. And then he withdrew with his fleet with small loss. But when they came back to Pelagia, to men's grief and wonder, he would not return to Minas Tirith, where great honor awaited him. He sent a message of farewell to Ecthelion, saying, Other tasks now call me, Lord, and much time and many perils must pass, ere I come again to Gondor, if that be my fate. Though none could guess what those tasks might be, nor what summons he had received, it was known whither he went, for well, he took boat and crossed over Anduin, and there he said farewell to his companions, and went on alone. And when he was last seen, his face was towards the mountains of shadow. Later in 2980, on his return to Rivendell, he entered Lothlorien, and there once again met Arwen in Karas Galathon. For one season they wandered together in Lothlorien, and at midsummer he gave her the heirloom of his house, the Ring of Barahir, and Arwen pledged her hand to him in marriage. Elrond gave his foster son permission to marry his daughter on the condition that he must first become king of both Gondor and Arnor, but only a king would be worthy of Arwen's hand. And then Aragorn once again went into the wild. He travelled far east into the lands of Run and south to Harad, where the stars are strange, as he says in The Lord of the Rings. In these lands, he went exploring the hearts of men, good and evil, and learning about the plots and devices of the servants of the Dark Lord. His exploits ensured the survival of the West much later during the War of the Ring, though we don't know exactly how. But I think there's a hidden clue that can explain why Aragorn suddenly decided to head east and south. In Umbar long ago, a great white pillar had been built on the highest hill of the headland above the haven by the followers of Elendil, for the humiliation of Sauron by Alfarazan. It was crowned with a globe of crystal that took the rays of the sun and the moon and shone like a bright star that could be seen in clear weather, even on the coast of Gondor, or far out upon the western sea. So it stood, until after the second arising of Sauron. Umbar fell under the domination of his servants, and the memorial of his humiliation was thrown down. So my theory is, that during Aragorn's attack on Umbar, he would notice that this great pillar had been destroyed. To Aragorn this would imply, that the Corsairs were not simply enemies of Gondor, but secretly servants of Sauron, and perhaps this made him wonder if all these tellings and Haratrim followed Sauron blindly, and that is why he would explore their lands, to better understand what Sauron's plan was, and why some men were willing to follow him. Had Sauron threatened them? Had he given them false promises, or something else? As Sam says in The Two Towers, it was Sam's first view of a battle of men against men, and he did not like it much. He was glad that he could not see the dead face. He wondered what the man's name was where he came from, 
And if he was really evil of heart, or what lies or threats had led him on the long march from his home? And if he would not really rather have stayed there in peace, all in a flash of thought, which was quickly driven from his mind. Now if you haven't read the books, you might remember something similar given to Faramir in the films. Still, I think Aragorn had similar thoughts, and wanted to know more about these men on the disservice of the Dark Lord. In one version of the Blue Wizard story, it's also said that efforts in the East and South prevented Sauron from total victory. And likewise, as mentioned, Aragorn's efforts are said to have done the same, though perhaps to a lesser extent. I guess that could mean Aragorn might have met the Blue Wizards, though I would need a little more proof to believe that theory. But let me know in the comments what you think. Did you like my theory, and did you find it plausible? And do you think Aragorn worked together with the Blue Wizards? Let me know below. Special thanks to all the patrons and members of the channel, and all the kind people that donate with super thanks. You guys make this channel possible, so thank you. If you want to know more about Sauron in the Second Age, you should check out this video next. As always, thank you all for watching and being part of the Council of the Rings. Farewell till next time.